ցուցյան եւ ծանր բահերին քեզեմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաթանակի Good afternoon it's great to be with you today to share these few moments to share this message with you we begin by proclaiming our faith in the father the son and the holy spirit amen last week i spoke to you a little bit about motherhood and in that context i spoke about the roles that we have i want to continue on that on that message as part of our armenian christian identity today what does it mean to be an armenian what does it mean to be a christian that's what we're talking about here on this show well armenian we bring in our national treasures we bring in the values of our people and of course in christianity that's a whole beautiful set of values that have adapted themselves to to who we are right now right In other words when we express ourselves as an individual we're not just talking about a person living wherever we may be in California in New York in Canada in Europe wherever we may be but we're talking about a, a self that brings in the past that brings in heritage that also brings in values from our faith and this is what Armenian Christianity is today right we exist today it's so important to understand that we are part of god's creation and that we belong to this beautiful beautiful story of humanity many times when we talk about the armenian church and armenian christianity we tend to believe it's something in the past it's a history lesson and we talk about the beautiful saints beginning with a saint mary the blessed virgin who gave birth to christ we talk about saint nerses norhali we talk about vartan the warrior we talk about datevatsi maybe not as frequently but we talk about them as people in history but what do they have to say for us today that's what our mean christianity is today now we talk about that for ourselves but also our mean christianity today implies that it's always Armenian Christian in other words our children have to relate to it too this is a big big issue because we understand that for children there's a whole different dimension of activities and let's say self uh, self imaging self definition issues that if we were to crank our brain just a little bit and remember what we went through at uh, at puberty at adolescents at becoming ma- mature young adults we realize that that is a time of turmoil when we have our hormones going off in all kinds of different directions our self worth issues are are defined by the people we interact with our friends and it is a very 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 difficult time of life i think if you were to just close your eyes for a few moments and go back in time to that time you realize that it was a very beautiful time but it also was a very challenging time it had its moments it had moments of definition of who we are and i want to speak to those defining moments especially in the lives of our children because you know that children go through very very difficult uh, decisions that we may not think that they're big decisions for us we may look at them and say oh well wait a minute wait till you have to pay a mortgage wait till you have to find a job make sure that you can put insurance uh, on top of the car so that you could put the uh, you could put the passengers in there and start driving and we have this complex 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 life that we have out there and then we look at our children and we say well what do you have over there all you have to do is worry about going to school all you have to do is worry about getting good grades but going to school and getting those good grades implies that they have to structure their life with all of their friends with all of the people around them and you've got to understand that is equally as difficult as our lives are with the mortgages with the insurance payments with the health issues with all of the tragedies that we see in our lives their lives too are very very complicated in trying to define themselves 
Last week I spoke about motherhood. I spoke about sexual identity. Very briefly, let's talk about it a little bit more in depth today. Children today have to find their sexual identity. We know that for young girls, especially, and I'm going to talk about the Armenian community. I'm a pastor here in the Glendale area, and I know this broadcast goes out to many, many areas. And the Armenian communities are very different, uh, but still you have some very basic issues. And finding themselves, finding children to define themselves as who they are, comes from definitions that they get from people all around them. People who will say, it's okay, or it's cool to be this way. And let's face it, you know, peer pressure, being part of that flow is very, very important. And part of that flow means that you have to be, you have to be okay. You have to be cool. And it's okay. You know, I think this is beautiful. You know, you see the images up on the big screen. You see you, you, uh, in movies. You see the images on TV. You see the, 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 the heroes of the day. And you say that that is cool and I want to be like that. Now the important thing is how do you get somebody to believe that it's okay to be cool because you are a creation of the God. And this is what we need to impress upon our children. But first and foremost, we need to be impressed upon it ourselves. Last week when I spoke about motherhood, I spoke about each of us being creations of God, each of us having that identity from God. If you can believe it, if we can believe it, we can pass that along to our children. Our children will accept it. Do you know with all the teachers that there are out there, if you go up to a child and you ask that child, you say, who is your hero? With all of the teachers that they have, with all of the people that they see on the big screen, in movies, when they see people on television, television, with all the singers and everybody, and you say, who is your hero? Do you know that most children will answer, my father, my mother? You have the most influence upon your children. You have more influence than you will ever, ever imagine. But you need to take charge of that influence. You cannot just throw it out there and say, well, let's hope something works out. No, it doesn't work out. You need to be active in the life of your children. And when you do that, the reflection that you have, if you believe in yourself, if you believe that you are a creation of God, you believe that God has his imprint inside of you, that he works within you, that is reflected onto your child. So now that child growing up in the society, growing up with peer pressure, Growing up with friends starts understanding that he or she is a reflection of God. And it's okay to be who they are. It's cool to be who they are. Today, right now, big issue within our community here in Glendale is sexuality, is virginity. Once it's okay for the men to lose their virginity, it's not okay for girls to do so. And if they do, there's all kinds of taboos and issues that go on, which make it very unfair. But more than unfair, it casts doubt upon that child of God. You have children who start believing that they are not worth it. And as a consequence of this low self-esteem, we appeal to things that can help relieve the pressure. When we talk about drugs, you know, there's illegal drugs and there are legal drugs. When you have a headache, what do you do? You pop an Advil, you take an aspirin, maybe, maybe you take a Tylenol, whatever it is. They're just drugs. They're legal drugs. But when a child has difficulties, when a child has challenges, guess what? There's all kinds of drugs out there. There's all kinds of fixes for them. Wouldn't it be beautiful if that child, when that child felt that difficulty, felt that hardness of life, can come to you and can share with you? Well, that begins with you being in their lives, understanding that you have a role in their lives. And you understand that God has given us so much out there, so much beauty out there. We're the ones who complicate it. And the answer is not just to turn off TV and say, okay, you're not going to watch any more TV. It's not to take away their cell phone and say, no more texting. It's not to say, no more going out to the movies. You cannot listen to any more music. Yeah, 
I guess that would work, but then you have a child who's basically in prison. It's to let them understand that they have decisions that they're going to make in life. All kinds of decisions about who they are, about what they take in their lives, about smoking, about drinking, about drugs. They're going to have decisions that they're going to make about their sexuality, about how to express their sexuality. And wouldn't it be better, instead of they had a book of rules, that they understood, rather, that they are a reflection of God. To understand that God has given them the most beautiful and most sacred gift of all. And that sacredness is life. And the only way that they will understand it is when you and I understand it. When you and I accept it. When I challenge you to go to church on Sundays, to become part of the divine liturgy, the holy badarak. It's not because we want people in church. Yeah, that would be good. But the badarak itself, the holy divine liturgy, has a rede- is a redeeming act. It brings us in full communion with Christ. So guess what? When you go to the holy badarak, Sunday morning, divine liturgy at your Armenian church, You engage in a conversation with God and the culmination, in other words, the end product of that is the Holy Communion. Well, what is that? Jesus Christ coming right inside of you. Christ is now inside of you. Guess what? You have the power of the universe. You have the power of creation right inside of you. Now, What you do with that is up to you. You also have free will. But guess what? When you have that power inside of you, the creative power of God, you understand that there is a sacredness to it. You understand yourself as a part of that equation, part of that story of God's love in this world. And this plays into that self-worth because what, what greater worth can we have than to be called children of God? And if we can reflect that as adults, we can reflect that in the lives of our children so that our children begin to understand. It's many, 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 there are many, many people out there. And there are going to be people in movies. There are going to be people playing music. There's going to be people uh, participating in all kinds of different uh, drugs, participating in different sexual activity, but as an individual, you understand the sacredness that God is for you, and you realize that your life now has purpose. It's not just to be standing over there and being abused, but to stand there and realize that you reflect something beautiful in your life. And so I leave you with this thought today. It's basically a continuation on the Mother's Day thoughts that we had last week. But it's for us to take our responsibility as Armenian Christians today seriously. Not just words, not just history, but to understand that God is living in our lives today. May God bless you. I look forward to being with you again next week. Until then, reminding you always, give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.